In this lecture, we are going to study the concept of a random variable, and then we will define its types, the discrete random variable, the continuous random variable, and the mixed type random variable. And then regarding random variables, we are going to define three very important functions, the probability mass function, or simply the PMF, the cumulative distribution function, or the CDF, and the probability density function, which we call the PDF. And then we will look at the properties of these functions and the relations between each of them. To start with, we are going to recall how we represent events. We have talked about this a little bit earlier, but let's again recall how we can represent events, for, uh, for example, regarding a die throw experiment. Suppose the event is the outcome being odd. In this case, we can represent this event using the set one, three, and five. These are the outcomes that are odd. At most two, we can write the outcomes one and two. The event that the outcome is prime, in this case, the outcomes can be two, three, or five. No less than four will include the outcomes four, five, six. And finally, difference to three is one or two. In this case, the outcomes included will be one, two, four, and five, because the difference of these outcomes are either one or two to three. Now, in this example, we are sort of lucky because the outcomes themselves are numerical and it's easy to define the events as well as it's easy to um, define functions of them. We will study defining functions on random variables later on, but to be able to define functions, uh, you would like the outcomes to be numerical. So for instance, consider the event where you randomly select a letter from the alphabet. Now, suppose that we are considering the English alphabet, in which case we have 26 letters, right? So the, the sample space would be A, B, C, D, et cetera, up to Z. In this case, defining events, for instance, um, let's say the event that the outcome um, is a vowel would be A, E, I, O, U. Or you can define other sorts of um, events. Uh, it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's not that difficult in this case, but of course, it becomes much more difficult when you would like to define functions on this. I mean, essentially a function is a mapping from one set to another. And it, it's, it's not impossible to define a function from this set to any other set. However, expressing them in a, in, in a compact mathematical form is going to be very difficult unless the outcomes themselves are numerical. Or for instance, representing the blood type of a randomly selected individual, in which case you would have the type O, type A, type B, type AB, and you would have the versions of RH positive or negative for each case. Again, um, defining events, since the sample space is not that big, defining events is not that difficult. However, uh, defining functions would be, again, um, a pain. And there are similar examples. For instance, representing the outcome of a coin toss. Here, your sample space, its heads and tails in which case this is a very simple random experiment. However, if you have n coin tosses, then defining events as well as functions is going to be difficult. For instance, if you consider the order of the outcomes of the coins um, important, representing each event, for instance, let's say we have five tosses. Uh, let's say the outcome is heads, heads, tails, tails, heads. Suppose that you consider this different from heads, tails, heads, tails, heads. 
where in, in both of them you have two tails, three heads, but the order is different, then um, you, you should be able to separate between these. And obviously, as n increases, let's say you have 10 coins, in which case your sample space will have a size of 2 to power 10. And listing all outcomes is going to be quite different, uh, quite difficult. Um, in addition, um, listing any event is going to be, unless you have um, an easier way to represent the common terms, it's going to be difficult if you need to list all possible uh, events uh, in, a, in a given context. Uh, it's going to be even more difficult when you want to define functions on them. Um, therefore, um, you would like to re represent the possible uh, outcomes in numerical form. So you want an enumeration. For instance, return to this event, your sample space is A, B, C, etc. Okay. And then, for instance, let's use the mapping A to 1, B to 2, C to 3, etc. Now, defining events is easier. For instance, you can define the event that the outcome is between the letter C and the letter Y. You can simply write it as uh, the outcome, let's say, X being between C and Y is 25. Okay, so it, it gets much more easy to represent your events. For instance, representing the outcome of N dice. Now here, you, if you recall, the outcomes of dice are numerical already. So as we have seen here, um, defining events uh, is not uh, that difficult. But if you have N dice again, and if you want to distinguish between the order and uh, representing them is going to be uh, difficult if N is large. For instance, you have, let's say, 10 dice, in which case your outcomes would be in the form of, let's say, 3, 1, 2, 6, 1, 2, 2, 5, 4. Okay, how many do I have? 6, 9, okay, one more, let's say, 3. This is one sample outcome. Now, either you want it this way, if you read their sum only, it's easier. But if you want to use it this way, either you use 10 tuples, which is not that easy to work with, or maybe you can define a mapping from this unique outcome to one unique number. That's defining an enumeration. So you'll have to come up with a sort of hashing function which maps this to a unique single number, which will represent this outcome. So that we call a random variable. 